Good morning. Good morning, West Palm Beach. You need to come down to the Awakening House of Prayer at 1.30 on Sunday. Good morning, South Dakota, Kansas, Texas, Worship Warrior, Maryland, Australia. Australia, I will be there. Look on my itinerary page, jennifermcclair.org slash itinerary. I'd like to meet some of you folks in Australia. Good morning, Angela Jennings. Listen, blessings from Durban. Share this with your friends. Invite your followers. We're going to get started in about one minute. Ontario, Canada, good morning. Good afternoon, Kenya, Georgia. <coughs> it's time to run. It's time to rock. It's time to roll. Penny Roberts King, good morning. Prophet Jamila, I saw you on there. You can't hide from me, sister. You're on my radar screen. I want to talk to you, Prophet Jamila. I've been thinking about you. I've been thinking about you. <coughs> Share. Felicia Tucker, good morning. Share, invite. I'm going to start in about 30 seconds. Christians, but their their love of self outstrips their love of God and the behave and manners that release witchcraft. It's so sad, you know. We need to pray for our brothers and sisters in the body of Christ because you never know what someone's going through. 
Yeah, they could just be a troll. They could just be someone stirring trouble. Or they might be looking at the world through a lens of hurt. And so you've got to discern what's going on. And either way, you got to pray. Jennifer LeClaire here, author of our devotional, Mornings with the Holy Spirit, listening daily to the still, small voice of God, senior leader of the Awakening House of Prayer in South Florida, founder of the Ignite Network. Listen, year four, expect more. January 4th, today's devotion titled, Look Ahead to Your Destiny. Look ahead to your destiny. Come on, we just came through the pressing on series. Look ahead, not look back, look ahead. And here's what I heard the Lord say, don't look back. I know your hurts, I know your wounds. I know your disappointments. I saw the betrayals. I saw the tears. I was with you through the pain. And I'm here to make it right. I will work it all. The hurt, the disappointment, the betrayals. Together for your good. Because you love me. And I love you. And I will give you beauty for ashes. But you have to leave those ashes behind. So I can resurrect with newness of life. Those things the enemy tried to kill, steal, and destroy. Remember Lot's wife, don't look back. Your destiny is ahead, and I am leading you toward your dreams. <laughs> what a promise. What a promise. What a promise. Today's scripture references Philippians 3, chapter uh, verses 12 through 14, Isaiah 61, verse 3, and Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And the prayer starter for today, thank you for, heal, for, for your healing power in my soul. Give me the strength to press beyond the past and toward my high calling in Christ. Show me how to make the divine exchange that will give me he, uh, beauty for ashes and I will glorify your name. Father, we thank you. We live to give you glory. We love you, God. We want to give you glory with every word that we speak, every thought that we think, every step that we take. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's about your glory. It's about your kingdom. It's about your son. We thank you and we praise you because you are good. Your mercies do endure forever. There's no one like you. We thank you. We glorify your you are, awesome. you are a mighty, 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 mighty God. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your grace, your unquenchable love, your unstoppable fire purifying us. Father, we just submit ourselves to you today. And we ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name. We ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name, to purify our hearts all the more. Lord, we submit to the furnace of affliction, the affliction of our flesh. Lord, you don't want our souls to be afflicted, but your spirit is at war with our flesh. And so, Father, we say whatever's in our flesh in this season that, that you want to put your finger on, put it on it. Help us to be sensitive enough to your heart that when you put your finger on our flesh, pointing to an area that needs to die a little more, pointing to an area that we need to crucify, pointing to an area that, to, that needs to just submit at a greater, like, God, would you just help us, Lord? Help us. Help us to submit. Not just in word, not even just in thought, but in deed. Oh, Jesus, I just, ah, shadraka tarabashti. Help us, Lord, to submit. Lord, that's what's wrong with so many of us. That is why we're not, some of us are not advancing. It's the flesh, the spirit. Come on. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing. We know what to do, God. We know what to say. But God, oh, we don't always do what we know to do. And we don't always say what we know to say. God, behind the scenes, you see our behavior. In that secret place, you see our flaws. And you love us anyway. But you're calling us higher. Come on. God's calling us higher. He's calling us higher. It's time to <clears throat> enter into a deeper consecration, a deeper, uh, just, 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 just put your flesh on the altar. Come on. Just, uh, Lord, help me to put my flesh on the altar. Or we're putting our flesh on the altar today. And we're saying, Lord, burn it up. Burn up away those things that are hindering love. Help us, Lord, to walk in love. Even with those who make false accusations, even and especially with those who launched fiery darts against us, used of the enemy, 
twisting our words, stealing, lying, robbing, inflicting wounds. God, help us, Lord. You know, a dead person doesn't yell when they get, <laughs> when they get hit. If you go to a graveyard and you throw a rock, guess what? Nobody cries out. Nobody says, what are you doing to me? Nobody defends themselves because they're all dead. It's a dying to self today. God, help us to die at that next level to ourselves, to our own lusts, to our own, <clears throat> our own selfish ambition, to our own ideologies that don't line up with your word, to our own uh, wishful thinking. Lord, help us to, to, to trade some wishbone for some backbone and press past this flesh that's hindering our lives. I don't know. And this isn't a popular prayer. I didn't, I didn't intend to pray this. I'm trying to navigate this rightly. Come on. Help me today. This is not a popular prayer. This is not the prayer everybody says, hallelujah, amen. This is what's coming out of my mouth by the spirit of God. So let's just press in. You know, you know, crucifying your flesh doesn't have to be all that painful. You read all these books and you hear all these people, oh, I thought I was going to die. <clears throat> it's just as painful as you want it to be. In other words, if you'll just submit yourself to God, just, just cooperate with the grace, there's grace to crucify your flesh. In other words, it doesn't have to be all that dramatic. It's when we fight and struggle and kick and moan and groan and just focus on it. No, no, no. Father, we submit our hearts to you today because we know that where you want to take us, yeah, I see a supernatural realm opening for many of you. That's what this is about. Thank you, Lord. I'm like, Lord, what are you doing to your people today? Why are we, why are we on this flesh-killing mode? The Lord wants to open up the supernatural to you in a new way, but your flesh can't go there. Some of you, he's called to walk in supernatural. Well, he's called all of you to walk in a supernatural ministry. But there's some of you listening to me. And you've listened. You've had a hunger. You've had a thirst. You've had a desire. You've had a craving to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. To cast out demons. To walk in grocery stores and see, uh, and see the power of God just fall right there in the produce section. Some of you have been seeking. Some of you have been hungry. Some of you have been pressing into that supernatural manifestation. The, the glory of God manifested through you for his glory. But, so, but we're usually what holds us back, it's either our wrong mindsets or our own flesh. And you've been studying the word. I don't know who you are, but you've been studying, you've been pressing, you've been renewing your mind, you have faith, but your flesh still keeps you out of it because you're easily aggravated by people or you're, you're easily distracted by, by what people are saying. It might not aggravate you, but it distracts you. Or maybe it doesn't, maybe it doesn't distract you or aggravate you. Maybe it actually wounds you still. Maybe you don't get aggravated. Maybe you just really get hurt. And so these are, these are the issues that the Lord is wanting to deal with so that we can press in to that supernatural ministry. Father, help us today. Lord, if, we have, if we're easily offended, God, Lord, let your love just be shed abroad in our heart one more time, all the more, again and again and again, until we're not offended. Lord, if, 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 we're, if, we're, if we're easily wounded, God, get to the root of that wound. Because you've not called us to walk in hurt, 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 hurt. To be hurt all the time. To be offended all the time. Love believes the best. Love is not touchy. Love is not fretful. Love is not resentful. I see that, Lord. Some of you have resentment in your hearts. And God has called you to walk in the supernatural. But that resentment won't allow you to do it. Because you see that one that needs help. But they're, un they're, 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 they're unlovely. Ah, Lord, what are you doing? Lord, help us not to be so touchy. Help us not to, yeah, the Lord shows me, uh, some of us will have the tendency to just have this knee-jerk reaction. Ah, it's like, you know what happens? I just saw a picture. You know what happens when you have a knee-jerk reaction? You kick somebody. <laughs> some of us are looking through glasses that are, just have wrong filters on them. And so you're, you're reading emails, you're, you're, you're listening to, to the words coming out of people's mouth, and, and you're hearing something different than what's being said. And then you're getting hurt, you're getting, uh, you're, 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 then you're falsely accusing people for attacking you when they didn't even attack you. It's this perpetual cycle. God, break this cycle in Jesus' name. God, would you break this cycle in the name of Jesus, this cycle of touchiness, this cycle of woundedness, this cycle of fretting, this cycle of fear. 
Lord, would you come and break in with light and break the cycles, God, in Jesus' name. I just saw that, that knee-jerk reaction, and you kick somebody. It's like when the doctor takes his little instrument and pounds on your knees for your reflex, and you just, you just jerk, you just kick. Lord, help us not to have knee-jerk reactions. Help us not to respond out of our souls. Lord, even if someone is attacking, even if someone is nasty, even if someone is accusatory, even if someone is just absolutely against us, help us still, God, to respond out of love because there's no excuse at all ever for us to respond out of our flesh or even out of our soul. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Some, some of you listening, it's like you, 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 you've been, some of you have been the, the, uh, the uh, God's really meddling today. Listen, some of you, uh, you, you some of you, some of you have been the, 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 uh, uh, the, the I don't want to say victim, but the, the subject or the target of veiled threats in your workplace or in your home. And, and it's not an all out threat. It, it, it's, it's, it's subtle, but you know, it's a threat. Others of you, you've been doing this to other people, and you need to repent. Others of you, you, you have. You've been, you've been making these veiled threats. You've been, you've, been, you've been trying to, and some of you have been trying. You don't know it. You, you don't see it. It's just something you learned from your family or something you learned from somewhere. It's not like it's even like med, premeditated. I'm meddling. The Lord's meddling today. Huh. But, but, but like intimidation tactics. Well, I'll make sure mom knows about that since you're so displeased. So, like they're just veiled threats. God, we break through that veil. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that we will not operate in the wrong spirit. We will not operate in an accus accusation. Lord, first deal with us. We're so concerned all the time, God, with those who are making accusations against us, threats against us, uh, uh, wrong, wrong whatever against us. God, start with us today. That's where we started with the fire, the refining fire, the dying to self. God, let us be not ones who look around at what everyone else is doing to us that's wrong all the time and begin to look at what we're not doing, what we need to do. Help us to pur purify our hearts. Who will ascend to the holy mountain of the Lord? Those with clean hands and a pure heart. God, would you help us? We want to enter into that supernatural ministry. We want to be those who glorify you in the earth. We want to be those who really serve as your hands and feet, who really, 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 do the greater works. Help us, Lord, to stop being so, uh, so uh, focused on what everybody else is doing to us and let us consider where we need to grow. Help us, God. Pursue, Hebrews says, pursue peace with all men and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Lord, we want to see you. We want to see you in all of your glory, in all of your beauty. When the, when the apostles, Peter, James, and John, when they were fully awake, they saw the glory of the Lord. Lord, don't let offense in our hearts keep us half awake, half asleep. Don't let bitterness in our soul keep us half awake, half asleep. Don't let uh, the, the, the knee-jerk reactions to, 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 to cause us to be half awake, half asleep. That, that deception, the dullness of spirit, God, break it off of us today in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord. When someone accuses, listen, beloved, when someone accuses you, don't focus on the accusation in, in, in terms of how nasty that was or how bad they are. But always look to see if there's any truth in it. Because sometimes there's a mustard seed, grain of truth. 99% of what somebody, I'm, I'm teach, probably teaching you this week a lot. 99% of the time, Um, so what, uh, what I wanted to say was 99% 99, 99 of what they say about you might be blatantly false, conjured up, witchcraft, wicked, but there could still be a 1% truth in that. You know, Mike Bickle taught me this. When people, he says, when people accuse me I, 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 and criticize me, he says, he says, I, I, I take that as a Holy Ghost research team. In other words, he uses the opportunity to examine his heart to see is there anything in that at all? 
that I need to repent of? Is there anything at all in what they're saying that's even resembling the truth that I might need to adjust my heart, change my attitude, see things differently? Sometimes it's 100% false. Sometimes it's not something that you, uh, that you actually did, but it's something that you, that you didn't do that you should have done. Sometimes it's not something that you did, but it's, a, it's the way you communicated a thing that was taken wrong. Now, the other person's responsible for how they take it because they should be believing the best. But if you can change one or two words in your sentence and, and, and avoid a big offense on somebody else's part, shouldn't you do that? Shouldn't you do that? You know, we, we, you know in, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, you know, before you try to get that speck out of your brother's eye, won't you get the, the telephone pull out of your own eye? And, 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 and I'm so grieved this morning, and I guess the Holy Spirit is grieved, and that's why this, this, this call has taken this thrust over just how Christians just want to just devour each other. How they just want to just, you know, they get offended. They don't like, uh, you know, the way that you glanced at them in church. You didn't even know you were looking at them. You're looking and thinking about something else, something at home that was going on that was hurting your heart. And all of a sudden they think you're giving them a dirty look. And instead of believing the best, we just attack one another. Then we want to go tell 15 people, well, I'm telling pastor. Well, maybe you need to have some counseling with pastor. Emails, that's the worst. You can't, there is no tone in email. Now, there are blatant words that are nasty and clearly accusative, but there's not a tone in email. You, people, you read into emails what, based on the filter that's in your heart. If you're full of rejection, if you're an angry person, every email somebody sends you that, that doesn't laud you and applaud you, you're going to think it was nasty. You're getting some, there's some deliverance coming out today. There's some deliverance in the, in the house today. You know, you see people at church or in the workplace, people are busy. They don't have time to sit there and talk to you for three hours about whatever it is. Don't get offended. Dear God, think about somebody else and all the things they have on their plate. Love believes the best. Lord, help us to die to ourselves, that we would not be those, God, who bring offense because we don't want to bring offense to others with, with poorly chosen words, with, with mistimed looks. But God, deliver us today from whatever's in our hearts that grieves you. Deliver us today, God. We're crying out because we want to walk in that supernatural realm. We want to walk with supernatural access. We want to walk in love. There's somebody listening to me. You feel so misunderstood because you really do have a pure heart for love. And it's like, you keep, it's like you've done everything you can do. To, 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 to walk rightly, to carefully choose your words. And there's people around you that are still misunderstanding you and still accusing you anyway. You know what you do in that case? You just got to give it to God. That's always the answer. But there's somebody listening to me and it's like, dear God, I, I've, I've, I've tried to explain. I've, I've read the email 10 times before I sent it to make sure it couldn't be read wrong. And you're getting accused anyway and being misunderstood. You know what? That's not your problem. It's their problem. Pray for them and give it to God. There's so much going on in this broadcast. Lord, Lord deliver us from evil. <clears throat> deliver us from evil, God. Lord, let it start with us. Let us not be those who go around talking about what everybody else did. Oh, you're passive aggressive. Oh, you're just a big bully. Oh, you're just this and you're just that. And you're just rude. But Lord, let, let us not just so, be so quick to judge other people. Jesus. Ah. Oh. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know what God is healing them from. You don't know why their attitude is sour. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know what they've walked through. You don't know what they're dealing with. You don't know what tragedy happened that they're not talking about, that they just can't hardly keep to, to themselves together. And you want to be mad because they gave you a wrong look. Jesus, would you help us? <sighs> help us to get over ourselves, God. Deliver us from a petty spirit. Deliver us from a petty spirit, a selfish, petty spirit. <coughs> Don't 
deliver us from the offenses and the pain in our own heart that causes us to behave that way toward others, accusing them when they've done nothing to us. They say an animal always tries to, you know, certain animals try to attack the one that comes to rescue them. Deliver us from that petty spirit, God. Got to go tell five people, I don't like that phone call I got. That message was nasty. I heard that anger. Dear God, how it must grieve the Holy Spirit. Lord, start with me. Help me to be a better communicator. Help me to believe the best in people. Help me, God, to not filter other people's intentions, motives, communications by some past experience that I had. Start with us, God. Huh. And the Lord just showed me a bubble of joy. <laughs> and how much more joy we'll walk in when we get to this place. <laughs> and the peace. I see bubbles. <laughs> I see pictures of bubbles, and one says joy, and one says peace, and they're rising up, they're ascending. There's another level of peace when we let these things go, whether we're the offended ones or we're the ones getting accused of an offense. There's, a, there's, another, listen, there's another level of peace. There's another, le another level of joy. Father, I thank you for the peace of God that passes all understanding. When we get past this place in our flesh, when we get past this whatever it is in our soul that, that sees things through fractured lenses, God, when we get past this place, we thank you, Lord, for the joy, the peace, the greater joy, the greater peace. God, bring us to that place. Deliver us right now in the name of Jesus. Help us. Help us, God, to get through this little rough spot, God. Those of us, those, those of you and us and me, whoever, there's some of us, we don't even know we need help. Lord, but you know. Deliver us, God, in the name of Jesus, from the petty spirit, from the offense spirit, from the passive-aggressive spirit. From the attack mode spirit, whatever's in us that's causing us to behave in ungodly ways, it grieves your heart. God, deliver us. We don't want to grieve you anymore. We don't want to say wrong words. We, want to, we, don't, want to, we don't want to spread lies about people because we think it's true. We think it's true. We think it's true. We think they wronged us. So we've got to tell, go tell 10 people. God, help us. Deliver us right now in Jesus' name. God, deliver us right now in Jesus' name. Give us a kind spirit. Give us a gentle spirit. Help us to walk in love. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> amen. God is good. I see so many emails come into our office. and Dear God, there's so many people that are hurt and wounded and broken in the body of Christ. And we're, we're, we're devouring each other, saints. My sisters, my brothers, in many cases, it, the world doesn't have to do anything to us. We're just murdering each other with our mouths. But we're going to commit today to the love revolution. That love revolution. Lord, we enlist ourselves as soldiers in the love revolution, not just soldiers in the army of God. You know what Apostle Yolanda Stiff, she was teaching one time at an event that I was at. She says, you know, as spiritual warriors, it's just real easy for us to come in blasting. We don't necessarily realize that some people are just, they just need some encouragement. They don't have a devil. They're just having a bad day, but we want to blast everything. It's so easy as spiritual warriors to just blast, 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 and see everything wrong in people. What if we just saw the hurt and we just ministered to the pain so that they could get free from the demon? Amen? A love revolution. I've gone on too long this morning. I just, I, I, see, I see emails coming to the ministry, and some people are so hurt, some people are so broken, and then some people go into attack mode because they read a sentence wrong on a website and begin to call my staff Jezebels, and I just, I, I just, I, I, you know, between the two, I see both sides. I see those who are hurt, wounded, need help, and not getting from their churches, or they're too embarrassed to go to their passion. And I'm seeing those who are who just have bitter, nasty spirits. And, 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 and they just, instead of believing the best, they want to immediately assume somebody's trying to, to, to mess them over. It's so grievous. I don't want any part of it. I don't want any part of it. 
I want to walk blameless before the Lord. I want to walk circumspectly before Jesus. Nobody's perfect. Dear God, can we show some, each other some grace and believe the best? Amen. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. I want to teach you this morning about uh, what a passive aggressive spirit looks like. It's actually a Jezebelic Ahab sort of codependent mishmash. I want to teach you about that in just a minute because there's a, there, here's, here's what really bothers me uh, also is, is when in, accusations are inaccurate. So if you're going to make an accusation, at least know what it is you're saying. If you're going to call somebody a Jezebel, understand that's one of the most serious accusations you can make in the body of Christ. It means that you're basically a, a, an idolater and that you're, you're teaching people to, 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 to uh, enter into sexual immorality. So when you call someone a Jezebel, would you please know what you're saying, please? It's a wicked, nasty accusation. And the Lord holds you responsible for your false accusations. You've got to repent. If you're going to say that somebody, uh, that somebody uh, has, a, has a certain spirit, know what you're talking about. If you're going to, you know, if you're, if you're going to call somebody a name, at least know what it is yours, because you're responsible for that. I hate those Jezebel accusations. Yeah, some people do have that uh, spirit that influences them, but dear God, it's not, it, it's, it's, it's just uh, <laughs> based on an email because you didn't know how to, you, because you, because, it, because it, something landed in spam, you're going to accuse somebody of being a Jezebel? Get educated. Get educated. So I'm going to talk to you about passive aggressiveness and what that really is. And you'll start to see this. And if you see it in your own self, I want you to repent. I want you to repent. But let's be accurate. Let's be accurate. If we're going to make accusations, dear God, can we at least be accurate in our accusations? No, we shouldn't make accusations at all. But sometimes we discern a thing and we don't know, we don't have the proper understanding of what a thing is. And so we're, we're, we're discerning something, but we've labeled it wrong because we don't have education or training on what it is that we're discerning. So we just, we, we saw something on YouTube one day and we, we said, oh, that's what it is. Well, maybe it is. Let's, keep, let's be accurate in the spirit. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Listen, if you want to sow into the ministry today, this is this was not this was one of those really hard calls where the Lord's really dealing with I think this is a really a message for the body of Christ, honestly, of 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 this whole knee jerk thing and the whole the whole uh, you know, easily offended thing and the whole, you know, false accusation thing. I just it's 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 but see the Bible says in the last days, uh, you know, that, that the people will be lovers of self and dishonorable toward parents and, and, and greedy for gain. And so we're seeing really the, 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 the decline of the behavior of so many Christians, I believe, is because, is because they're, they're under attack. Because some of them aren't really, number one, because they're under attack. Number two, some of them aren't Christians anyway. They might go to church, but that doesn't make you a Christian. And, and three, you know, they're just, they've got so many hurts and wounds. And we need to, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the biggest area that I can focus on is trying to help people get free of the hurts and wounds that cause them to behave in ungodly ways. That, that's that's the, my thrust, is that deliverance angle. I'm not here to decide who's a Christian and who's not. I'm here to decide who needs help and how to help them. Amen? Amen. If you want to sow into the ministry today, you can do that. This is not a, uh, you know, you, you have to understand I'm being led by the Spirit to do these things. If, if, all, if I just wanted to take up big offerings every day, I would never pray a prayer like that. I would never challenge, I would never allow the Holy Spirit to challenge us like that. I just pray prosperity and hallelujah, you know, mates, dates, and babies. No, but I've got to pray what's all, what, what the Lord puts on my heart. I've got to be obedient or I might as well just shut it down. But if you want to sow into this, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. You can go to jenniferleclair.org slash donate. Thank you, Carol, so much for the uh, wonderful cards that you sent us, the Christmas cards. We did get them yesterday, and Karen for the, uh, the coffee uh, the coffee stuff. That was awesome. Amen. JenniferLeClaire.org slash donate. We have a big vision and I can't do what God's called me to do without faithful partners like you. I try to keep it real. If that offends you, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. If my prayer this morning offended you, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Offense, the manifestation of offense is the first step towards your deliverance. And God loves you with the passion I'm not against you. I, 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 I quickly forgive. I learned a long time ago. I don't even remember things. People say, oh, someone so said something about it. It's like, oh, I, I already forgot about that. I forgave and it's under the blood. I forget about it. I don't, I don't hold on to these things. I've learned not to harbor them. 
I've learned not to harbor them. JenniferLeClaire.org slash donate. You can become a partner there if you want to help me to get this media out into the nations. You can use uh, text to give 754-701-2161. 754-701-2161. Text the word pray. All of the options are there on my website at jenniferleclair.org slash donate. P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida 33301. It's all there. And I see people are typing it in there. Amen. God is good. 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 I want to remind you, please, 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 sign up to watch. It's free. Sign up to watch the uh, prophetic word of the Lord, the release uh, for 2018. I'm going to be diving into the, to the uh, I almost said mega, to the metamorphosis. One of you did a, a little banner yesterday. It was so awesome. It said mega metamorphosis, and you tagged me it on Instagram. Uh, praise God. A mega metamorphosis. That's what's happening. I'm going to release the word, which many of you have heard already, but I'm going to teach on it uh, on Friday night, and I'm going to be laying hands on everyone who comes in person. So if you're in driving distance to South Florida, you're going to want to be there. I'm also going to be doing a, a book signing. Uh, if, if you want to pick up a hard copy of the book and you want me to sign it, uh, I will be there doing a book signing Friday night at the Awakening House of Prayer in South Florida. Please register for this. If you cannot come in person, it's free to watch it online. There's not a, any kind of charge. There's no strings. We'll send you the link to watch it on, on uh, tomorrow afternoon. Okay, we'll send you the link to watch it on tomorrow afternoon. Uh, so you'll have to check your, your messages, and we'll send it out a couple times. Then after the broadcast is over, we'll send it again. We'll send it again. You can, you can, or you can just go register at ahop.tv. It's free. Ahop.tv, you can just register right there and you can access it. If you've already registered on Eventbrite, we'll send you the link. Don't worry. Please don't start sending my office emails about how somebody on my staff is a Jezebel, please. Because one of these times I'm going to cast the devil out of you or I'm going to just block you. <laughs> Amen. You, matter of fact, you can go watch about Jezebel on Ahop.tv if you want to learn what Jezebel really is. So it's free. Go, go register at event at jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. It's free. Go register jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. You'll get the link afterwards. Share it with as many people as you can. I want people to get in on this teaching. I know there's a lot of people that you know maybe they're they don't have money to buy a, a ten dollar book. You know, the, but the, this teaching will really help them. So it's it's free. There's people in other nations that are going to be watching this. Go sign up. Share it. Share the Eventbrite link and where they can register. Share that with all your friends. Just Put it on your Facebook page. Email your friends. So you got to watch this. If you can't watch it live, you can watch it later. No problem. Amen? I'm going to be in Conyers, Georgia, February 1st, February 2nd, the first ever Ignite Network regional meeting. You don't have to be part of the Ignite Network to come. It's just hosted by the Ignite Network. You understand? It's hosted. It's, a church has opened up to us. Uh, it's our meeting. The church is not holding the meeting. They've opened up their facility to us. We want to bless them. Uh, but it's but it's uh, it's it's my meeting. It's the Ignite Networks meeting. Uh, we'll be uh, uh, you know dealing with uh, you know uh, you know the the issues of um, uh, of the administration there. Uh, of course, they'll be helping us. But we'll be it'll be it, it, we're not trying to burden them. In other words, uh, and so you can register for that also on Eventbrite. It's free. If February first is a Thursday. February second uh, is a Friday. Uh, I'm going to be uh, activating people in the prophetic, doing the prophetic training. Uh, there'll be gifts of the spirit manifesting. Uh, if you um, if you are uh, in, within driving distance, please come. I don't many of you might not be able to come uh, Friday night because you got work. I mean, I'm sorry, Thursday night. If, you, if you're driving from a distance, you might not be able to come Friday night. I mean, th I'm sorry, Thursday night if you're driving from a distance, unless you can just take the day off work. But uh, many of you can come. Uh, Many of you can't come maybe on Thursday, but you come on Friday. Uh, but if you come on Thursday, come both days. Uh, but it, it's, it's going to be an Ignite blowout. I am going to share with you more about what the Ignite Network is. Uh, just briefly, I'll be doing some book signings. I'll have my new books, Dream Wild. And uh, I will have uh, my new books, Dream Wild and Metamorphosis, with me. And so I'll be doing book signings. Uh, I'll be uh, laying hands on people, imparting, activating, equipping. Uh, so that's Friday the 1st and the 2nd. And, uh, and you, can, uh, you can do that there. Amen? Let me just uh, say something about this prayer and intercession mentor course. It was awesome. There's, I'm trying to find your help. 
I'm trying to figure out why so many people thought that they had to sign into a website to listen to the call. Um, what in the language on the website caused anybody to think that? If, if somebody could email my office and let me know, because I'm getting emails. I tried logging into the account today for prayer and intercession course. It still says course is not started. And there's no materials to download. It was a phone call. Um, I, I'm, so I'm confused. I want to correct this issue. I don't know why people thought you had to log into a website. Now, you do have a login, but that's to listen to the, the replays. That's not to listen to the live call. There's no way for it. So I'm not, um, I'm not, I'm, I really want to correct this, this perception because there's about five people that have had this perception. I'm, th I, I'm not sure why. Um, and again, I'm, I'm looking at myself first. It, was I not clear? Uh, or is it just that people are not reading the instructions because instructions were mailed out and it said, here's the phone number, here's the code, here's the time, and you'll be able to log in you know, after now, I don't, I don't know. Uh, was it clear? Was it clear? Was it clear? Okay. I don't know. Like, I really, I really, I'm sincere. I'm not trying to be uh, difficult here, but I'm not trying to be, I'm not sarcastic at all. I really, I don't know. And then, you know, what that does is, is that it, it causes my staff to have to reiterate all these emails. And it's just, it, it's a burden on them. It's a burden on me uh, as well. It was clear. So I don't know. I don't know. We have so many things to do and so few hands to do it. Um, and so, you know, when we get these kind of things where we have to go back, I, I, I want it to be clear, first of all, because I don't want people to be frustrated. Maybe because they didn't read the instructions. I don't want people to be frustrated. But second, secondarily, I don't want my staff to be stressed out trying to answer all these emails. You believe it's a spirit. <clears throat> The, 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 the event bright also showed to go to the website. Well, some people just don't read. I'm, I'm seriously being sincere. Like I don't, you know, it did. I, 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 I thought it was clear, but I'm, I'm asking you sincerely because if, if I'm wording something wrong, but some people got really nasty over it. I mean, we got some nasty emails. I was waiting to, to watch this when I got home from work and you didn't sense like, dear God, help me. And it releases witchcraft at me and my staff. So pray for us. It, it gets to the point sometimes where I would just rather not, not do these classes anymore. Because, of, because I don't like to put my staff in the line of fire from people who are just really rude. I mean, help me, please. It really does. Sometimes I just wish that I just, I mean, sometimes I just, you know, do I, I don't really need to do this. You know, it's like, dear God, it was clear. So what did you think of the class last night? That is probably what the enemy wants. I'm not taking it personally. I just don't like, I don't need the extra warfare. I, I don't need to do these classes. I do it out of a labor of love because I'm led by the spirit. But dear God, at what point does the Holy Spirit release me from it because of the, uh, the accusations? It was awesome. Amazing. Amen. School of the Spirit dot TV. Uh, it is uh, the mentoring and prayer and intercession. It's the nature of the beast. It is tough to get away from. I've got a thick skin. I don't take it. Uh, it just, it, it grieves me. And some of my staff is very young. So they see this stuff and they take it personally. Like they're, like they're one, one to know, could I have done better? What did I do? They get frustrated. Amen. School of the Spirit TV. You can still, my developer and the people were upset because the link weren't up last night. It's like we, the call ended at nine o'clock. I can't make the developer, you know, get out of bed and go put up a link. Plus the link has to render. And in the business hours are not yet. It's still 645 in the morning. And people are very, very, um, uh, very uh, insistent that that should have been up immediately. Amen. So help me, pray for me, because those things, those things are, are troublesome to me. But I remember, you know, I, I understand that people are either not reading or they're hurt or they've been ripped off by other Christian ministries. Okay, this is, this is, uh, this, let me, let me just make this, make, make, let me make it very clear. In the, in the email, I said, the link will be in your, in your deck, but it, it can't get up there immediately, Okay. 24 hours. I mean, if you were buying something from the world, you wouldn't expect it to be up at 9.15 on Thursday, on Wednesday night. <laughs> Amen. 
You wouldn't expect that, would you? But somehow with me, people just expect an immediate response. I don't know why. Anyway, yeah, we need to, we need to pray because it's discouraging for my staff. I've got a young staff, and they've not they've not uh, they've not uh, been exposed to some of this stuff before. And it grieves me for them. Amen. Thanks, Sherry. Thanks, Sherry. Well, if you still want to sign up for that, you can. Uh, yeah, don't grieve past. Don't grieve, baby prophet, please. If you if you if you missed it last night, the recording will be up. I emailed early this morning for something the developer, and I said, "Here's the rendered link. Would you please get this up ASAP?" So usually within 24 hours, and, and you know he's he's he, he's not uh, he doesn't work for us exclusively, either. All right, if you if you still liked that. If you, if you still want to be part of that, you can still sign up. You'll be able to hear the link. There's no distance in the spirit. The Lord released mantles. Now, I ha you have to know, any of, any of you that knows me, um, I did not set out with any agenda at the end time prayer, and I began to pray. And I was actually very distracted at the beginning of my prayer because I was seeing emails come in from people that were saying, you know, the link's not up. I wanted to watch this now. What's wrong with you? I don't see it anywhere. And, and I was very, I began to get grieved in that moment. But I, 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 I turned away, I began to pray, and the Lord released mantles of boldness, mantles of, I can't remember what it was. Anybody remember? Because it was, it was uh, by the Spirit. Mantles, 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 all kinds of mantles, mantles of accuracy. I can't remember. But if you want to still be part of that, you can be school of the Spirit TV. I'm just urging, I'm, I'm pleading with you, please read instructions. Please do check your spam. That's not a cop-out on our part. We have a MailChimp email email e-commerce system and it it actually gives us a list if it was delivered to you or not so we know that things are delivered like we we have assurances so please don't think we're making an excuse somebody sent a nasty email well they, you know you always say it's in spam well dear god our system showed that it was mailed could it be possible that the devil is resisting your 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 it could it be could it be could it be possible the enemy is resisting you resisting this amen could it be possible that maybe the devil's at the, 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 that maybe we're doing everything right and maybe maybe it's the devil? Amen. Amen. I'm going to stop, but again, just so grieved. It makes me just not want to do these things because of the, the handful, but it's really a handful. It's really a handful. Listen, I want to teach you about passive aggressiveness. So I want you to understand what this really is. Prayer mantles. Yes, prayer mantles. Prayer mantles. Hey, Alma, we'll be talking to you today at 12. Pastor, we'll be talking to you today. Yeah, we have to understand that, you know, people, there's all kinds of things going on in the world. Walk in somebody else's shoes for a minute and you'll get it. Hey, Sherry. Thanks, Sherry. That was a good suggestion. We do post stuff in the Facebook group normally, uh, but what happens is in the Facebook group is it scrolls down, and if people don't have their Facebook group uh, to alert them to every message, they miss it. So there's just kind of like no winning. <laughs> You can put it on every platform and people still don't get it. I think there's an enemy involved. Let's talk about passive aggressiveness. Yeah, some of you typed in your email address wrong. You had a typo in your email address and so it bounced back. We, I contacted you personally last night. Believe the best. I want to talk to you about a passive aggressive trap today. I wrote about this a while ago, and then I was studying this morning and, and thinking about, you know, some various behavior patterns. Uh, I, I felt the need to, to press into this a little more. And, and I'd written about it, so I'm, I'm pulling this up out of, uh, I'm pulling this up out of, uh, I, have an, I have an old article that I wrote. I didn't, I didn't write all this this morning, but I remembered, I remembered, I remembered this article that I wrote. And you know, it, it dealt with Jezebel and Ahab, but Jezebel and Ahab are not the only ones that are passive aggressive. You don't have to have a Jezebel spirit or an Ahab spirit to be passive aggressive, although Ahab was especially passive aggressive. And they had a codependent relationship and they worked together. But let's strip all the Jezebelic stuff out of it and just focus on the passive aggressive part. We need to know what this is because we don't want to be guilty of tapping into this. 
but we also don't want to bow to the passive aggressive behavior in others. So according to New York University uh, Langone Medical Center, a person with a passive aggressive behavior pattern may appear to comply or act appropriately, but actually behaves negatively and passively resists. Now this is what Ahab did when Naboth told him no. He wanted Naboth's, Naboth's uh, vineyard, he wanted Naboth's land, and, 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 and Naboth said, no, my, my dad gave this to me. This is my inheritance. I can't sell this to you. And Ahab said, you know, well, he, he, he walked away seeming to comply. In other words, Naboth said, no, Ahab didn't pitch a fit. Naboth said, no, Ahab just walked away. Ahab just walked away. On the service, he seemed to comply with Naboth's wishes. And then, and then he went away peacefully, but he behaved negatively. He climbed into bed. He refused to eat. He sulked. He mourned. He grieved. He pouted. It was passive resistance. Passive resistance. NYU also lists symptoms of passive aggressive personality disorder. So some of these, some of it is a spirit. I think there are true personality disorders, but I think most of this stuff is, is spirits when people act like this. Or, or it's flesh. Or it's flesh. Sulking. Pouting. So some of the symptoms of passive aggressive personality disorder, or, or you might say the manifestation of a, personal, of a per, pa, passive aggressive spirit, is a contradictory and inconstant behavior. So NYU says this, a person with a behavior pattern of passive aggressive may appear enthusiastic to carry out others' requests, but purposely performs in a manner that is not useful and sometimes even damaging. This characterizes Ahab's entire reign, doesn't it? He accepted the crown and he committed to keeping a covenant with the Lord only to marry a foreign woman named Jezebel who brought foreign gods into the land. He then went on to give her authority and, 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 and to do whatever she wanted, to kill the prophets of Jehovah, and, 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 and she killed Naboth too. So passive-aggressive uh, personality disorder, according to NYU, is characterized by intentional avoidance of responsibility. Intentional avoidance of of responsibility. Some behaviors that may have uh, that may be used to avoid responsibility include procrastination, to delay or postpone needlessly and intentionally, deliberate inefficiency, which is purposely performing in an incompetent manner, or forgetfulness. See, all this is done on purpose. It's like a sabotaging spirit. NYU also lists several other traits, um, uh, feelings of resentment toward others, uh, stubbornness, is a passive-aggressive uh, trait. Passive-aggressive people also tend to be argumentative. And so if we have these traits, we need to repent because it's, it's not the Lord. People with passive-aggressive uh, uh, spirit, they, they have a, a un, unexpressed anger or hostility. Unexpressed anger or hostility. Ahab never expressed his anger or hostility toward Naboth, but he let Jezebel handle it. Passive aggressives includes being easily offended, easily offended, being resentful of useful suggestions from others. Like somebody's trying to help you and you resent them for it, blaming other people, being sulky, being cro uh, chronically impatient. So I've, dis I've discerned, oh my goodness, I've discerned I'm dealing with a lot of passive aggressive people. <laughs> oh my goodness. I have discerned I'm dealing with a lot of passive aggressive people, chronically impatient, blaming others, being sulky, being resentful, easily offended. Bam, oh my goodness. Passive aggressive traits, arguing, resenting, blaming, sulking, impatience are essentially works of the flesh, but they can be fortified by demon spirits if we don't work with the Holy Spirit to grow in grace, to follow God. When we embrace rather than reject flaws in our souls, the Holy Spirit shows us we're walking on really dangerous ground. We're walking on really dangerous ground. Again, we must first look at our own hearts. If we have these sorts of issues in our own soul, we need to repent. It's easy to see these things in other people. More difficult to see them in our own hearts. Because we don't want to see them. Let's get the speck out of our own eye. 
before we try to get the telephone pole out of somebody else's eye. Let's take responsibility for the things that we do that are wrong, for the things that we say that are sharp and biting. Let's take responsibility for our lack of clarity and communication. Ask others around you who you can trust. Am I manifesting with passive aggressive behavior? Because if so, I don't see it and I wanna know. And I was talking with somebody yesterday and they said, you know, I'm having this issue with, 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 with my mother and, and if this is me, if I'm, if I'm doing something wrong, if I'm uh, contributing to this, if I'm out of order, please tell me. And that is a right heart. That is always my heart. Listen, if I've done something, uh, if I do so, if I have a friend, if I'm in a relationship, a friendship, uh, a partnership, uh, a, a, pa a pastoral sort of relationship, and I know that something is bothering you, or I think I've bothered you, I'm very quick to say, listen, have I, I, I did, are you, are you, are you, you know, are you mad? Are you upset? Did I say, if I sense at all that I've done something wrong, I'm, I, I, I want to know because I want to adjust my behavior. Now, some people, you just can't adjust your behavior enough. They'll just have you running in circles trying to please them. I'm not talking about that. But any kind of relationship with, with I have a daughter. She was just visiting. And, and, and she, uh, you know, I know there's certain things that bother her now. She's, you know, there's certain, she knows there's certain things that bother me. They're just, you know, maybe we need to grow out of the things that bother us. Yes. But in the meantime, if someone has something that really bothers them, maybe, maybe it shouldn't bother them, but we can be mature enough not to prod and poke in the area that bothers somebody. Amen. I, I mean, my daughter hasn't lived with me for four years, but I still know what irritates her. And I'm not going to purposely do something that annoys her. And she's not going to purposely do something that annoys me. But sometimes people seem to be purposely annoying you, but it's just a spirit. <laughs> it's, just, it's just something that's unresolved in their heart and they don't really mean to. And they, well, they're provoking me. Well, maybe they're not trying to provoke you. Maybe they're just that hurt. Maybe they're just that skewed. We need to learn to believe the best in people. And we need to make sure that we start with our own selves. No more passive aggressiveness, right? In Jesus' name. I want to pray for you. I want to remind you, you can get equipped. Schoolofthespirit.tv. Writer's training. School of warfare. School of the prophetic. School of the seers. Prayer mentoring and intercession. It's all there for you. If you want to give an offering into the ministry, you can do that at jenniferleclair.org slash donate. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Spirit of God. Lord, help us, God, to be those who examine our own hearts. We don't want to be everyone's fruit examiner. We want you, God, to be our fruit examiner. If you see rotten fruit on our vine, God, if you see passive aggressive fruit, fruit of offense, fruit of bitterness, fruit of resentment, Lord, clip it off. Help us to die to ourselves and help us, Lord, to be those who walk in love.